that I will preach this message later today, but I felt led in my heart and in my spirit that this is the message for this, a new service uh, as a new church plant, particularly with, uh, with what's in my heart, with what's going on in our nation, with what's going on around the world. It is critical that the church understands its unique role in being a bridge, not a wall. And this is not a political message. This is a spiritual message. And I pray that you will see the heart of Jesus because there is a great chasm of unrest and dissension and division, even in the body of Christ, along political ideology. But it is very, very important for you to know that Jesus is not a politician. He is a king. The last time I checked, he's still on the throne. Now, I know this is an early service and you're more of an academic crowd. That's what happens statistically. The earlier the service, the smarter the people. I'm just saying. But if you're here, I'm going to need you to shout me down every now and then to let me know that you're in the house. But with all of the places of division, more tension in this nation than at any time since the 1960s, we are in the middle of a cultural, social, and spiritual revolution. What is the role of the church? How are we to respond to what's going on? Do we take our cues from society or do we get above society and become citizens of the kingdom of God and begin to lead from a place of moral high ground, which is the word of God, and the compass should not point left or right based on political ideology, but it should point true north so that people can see Jesus in what we do. What I have come to realize is that there are many different versions of Jesus based on who you are. And that's a whole other sermon. You may have to come back later to find out about that. But unfortunately, there are some people's Jesus that allow you to exclude others that don't remind them of themselves, whoever that is and however that is. But I'm glad that there is a church in Miami, down here where Art Basel normally happens. Did, did I say it right? I was like, who is Art Basel? I never heard of him. I don't, I don't know him. I never heard of him. <laughs> I'm glad that there's a church whose doors are not going to close based on whatever station of humanity you currently find yourself in. So in Luke 15, we see Jesus giving an illustrated sermon, uh, drawing the attention of his listeners into a very common place of understanding, a patriarchal society, an older son, a younger son, inheritance, all of these things would be familiar story fodder for the people that Jesus is speaking to. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living in Miami Beach. <laughs> Joking. Stop it. It was South Beach. Um, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. So here was a man who was a citizen of one country, and because of bad decisions, and then there were some other things that were outside of his control because you can't control famine, because you can't control weather, and you can't control climate, and you can't control what the ground does. All you can do is sow the seed. And what VU is, is a seed into a neighborhood that everybody else decided had only one purpose, or maybe the purpose had long passed, and so it doesn't have value. So why in the world would you sow so much value into a place that was desolate? Because God specializes in revival. And until you get in your spirit that this is not a church, it is a revival, then you may 
run the risk of walking in casually when this is not a casual move in the spirit. Something is happening in the ground. Something is happening beneath the surface. Something is happening up under your feet. Now please don't let me preach by myself when I've been on planes till midnight getting here. We can be excited about so many things and get casual about the things of God. Next week, because I live in Houston, I got a lot of stuff to do with that Super Bowl, and that's cool. Neither one of my teams is in it. I just don't want New England to win. Just don't. Whatever. Jesus, if you love me. I don't want nobody to be permanently injured. Just give them the flu. You know, something, you know, give them the runs or something, Jesus. That's terrible. Stop it, Pastor. He was a citizen of one country, but because of things that he did and things that were out of his control, he had to shift. And he said, you know what? I came from more than this. And one of the great moments of transformation for every human being is when they realize, I'm more than this. You know how many women would walk away from that no good dude if you realized you were more than this? How many years have you wasted with a man who made you think he was God's gift when in fact you're the favor factor, which is what the Bible says. He should be running after you. Stop giving him husband benefits if he ain't wife you. I ain't playing today. Some of y'all need to wake up. Gently nudge your neighbor, say, hey, wake up. That was real casual. I said, tell him, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Crying out loud. 17th verse. But when he came to himself, when he woke up, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. He arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Daddy, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. The father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. Let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive. Again, he was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. I want to talk to you from the subject heading, leave the door open. Leave the door open. For those who are taking notes, leave the door open. As I said at the beginning, this is not a political message, but I would be foolish, and it is dishonorable to the history of scripture and the context of scripture, not to understand the purpose of a church at this moment in history with the social and political landscape that we are living in. We do not live in a bubble. We have not yet been translated. We are not in heaven. We are in the earth. And as human beings, we have a responsibility to take scripture and bring a social justice context to it for the purposes of fighting for lost souls. The purpose of the church is not just to hear good songs with tiny people with skinny jeans on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever. The purpose is to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to introduce people who have never heard of an eternal ferocious love that has pursued them out of eternity into time and a community of believers that will walk with you until you are able to stand on your own. This is the purpose of the church, more specifically the purpose of VU Church for a city that is desperate for a move of God, not a move of religion, not a move of 
hey, let's hang out and chill and drink coffee, but a move of God where my life is changed, my soul is transformed, my spirit is renewed, and my body is healed, and my heart is mended. I need a move of God. I did not wake up early in the morning to leave here the same way I walked in. I have to see Jesus. Somebody get me to Jesus. I need a 10 second praise break in here. For those who don't know me, I'm gonna teach you while they're praising what a praise break is. You act a complete fool for 10 seconds because God is worthy of your craziest, rowdiest, most radical praise. 10, nine, eight, seven, five, four, three, Hey. I don't have time for church as usual. And I don't want to go to church for people that just look like me. I grew up in a community and my church was reflective of that community, but in a homogenized society where people still want to be around that which reminds them of themselves, we must be intentional about pursuing diversity. We must, we must make community our obligation and commitment in spite of the prevailing winds of a current culture of cynicism and secular humanism. Looking at this crowd is just blessing my heart because I don't know who y'all are. I see all kinds of ethnicities and different cultures and hues and, and different just caramel and then I see a little bit of light skin and I see some long hair, see some short hair, I see some short hair with some long hair sewn in. And that's good if you bought it, it's yours. Do your thing, boo. I'm not mad at you. If we're ever going to address the issue of race and class, it will not be addressed on a political level because politics is woefully inadequate to deal with the moral fabric of the human soul. The church must be the place that gives an example of what it means to look past ethnicity and, ah, help me, Holy Ghost, economic discrepancy and here, the only thing that matters is the blood of Jesus that has been applied to your soul. Leave the door open. What is the purpose of the church and how does that fall into context with the scripture that I just gave you? Here we have a young man who is devoid of understanding and who is also disrespectful. In a patriarchal society, to ask for your inheritance while your father is living is akin to saying, you are as good as dead to me. What he was saying is, you have nothing else to teach me, nothing else to offer me. I'm ready to live like you're already dead. And the father didn't slap him down, which is a miracle. <laughs> Clearly, he's in the suburbs. Okay, son, take, take your inheritance. <laughs> Have a great time, all right? Take the camel with the 24s on it. Go ahead. <laughs> Suicide doors on the camel, thanks. Suicide saddles, stop it. <laughs> stop, man, I'm trying to preach. So imagine... He got his thing happening. He's like, turn up. He's out, he's in the streets. He's, he's throwing up whatever they had, whatever, <laughs> you know. The, <laughs> or maybe he was doing that, throwing corn. I don't know. <laughs> he's out, he's in the streets. He's got his boys, folk he thinks are his boys. Because they're always your boys when you got stuff. 
You got money, little status, you're popular. Those are your girls, they love you, but those are not your friends. True friendship, true relationship is not found in your best times. True relationship is those people who love you when you have nothing to give them, nothing to offer, and you are at your lowest possible place. I want real friends. I don't, I don't, I don't want the, the, the circumstantial friends. If it's all good, you're proud of me. But when I'm broken, you have nothing to say. Let me tell you something. When you're my friend, I roll with you. I'm, I'm that ride or die dude. I don't care what you do. I don't care how you live. And if you're my friend, I'm going to cover you. You know, I saw your friend with such as I don't know what you're talking about. And why are you worried about what they're doing? If you don't want to do that, then just keep living your life. But you're not going to talk about my friend. And in much the same way, the body of Christ needs to function as a protective mechanism against the prying eyes of people who don't want to believe anyway. Church is filled with hypocrites. No, it's not. It's filled with humans. A hypocrite is not a person who says one thing and does another. A hypocrite is somebody who says one thing and is another. We all sin. We're in here for a reason. And if you haven't sinned, please get out. Because this is not for you. The VU is for broken people who are trying to be made whole. The VU is for people who struggle with addiction, but they come into community because they need to know that one day the addiction won't have them. The VU is for people who are struggling in their relationship. The VU is for people whose marriages are on the rocks. The VU is for that young man who's still trying to figure out his identity. Who do I want to be? What do I want to be? Who do I want to sleep with? And instead of judging him for where he is, we love him in the midst of it, welcome him into the community and say, you have a home here. And whatever happens from here on out is between you and the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to love you while I I got you. I need a 10 second praise break. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Somebody say, leave the door open. You know, I don't know about you, but I've had family members, aunts and uncles, who struggled with different types of addiction. And when I was growing up, my grandmother, um, you know, she knew that some of her children were struggling. It didn't stop her from loving them. I was fascinated with that kind of love. She would see them, eyes red, speech slurred. You could tell she was hurt and upset. She would always have a place at the table for them when it was time to eat. Just come on in and get something to eat. Thanks, Ma, I, I love you. <laughs> I will love you. you all, somebody snorted out there. She was like, <laughs> you always love people when you're drunk. From what I've heard, I would, <laughs> wouldn't know. <laughs> I love you. Sometimes one of her kids wouldn't be home at the time that they said. And so she'd be like, hey, just leave the door unlocked, just in case they come home. I'm trying to get through this sermon. Because this is the function of where the church needs to be in a time when things are being closed off, and people are being cut off. The role of the church is whosoever will, let them come. The prodigal, the Bible says that the young man wasted his possessions on prodigal living. Many theologians incorrectly label this story the prodigal son. It didn't say he was a prodigal, it said his living was prodigal. We're getting ready to preach, that's why I told you to take notes, y'all missing it. Some of y'all are like, what, what are you talking about? prodigal son speaks to his relationship with his father. Prodigal living speaks to the life that he lives, but does not in any way attempt to disconnect him from his lineage. 
Many people have incorrectly assumed because you do a wrong thing, you are the wrong thing. My son and my daughter do things that don't please me and don't line up with my, with my raising of them, and so I correct them, but it doesn't change their relationship to me. Let me help you to understand something. I'm going to pop my son on his bottom. I'm going to tap my daughter on her hand. It won't even hurt, but she'll cry anyway because she loves her daddy and she's so beautiful. She looks just like me. She's light-skinned with long hair. <laughs> my correction of them is actually a function of my love for them. The moment I stop correcting them is the moment they should begin to worry because I've now said, my hands are off of you. Many of you have been squirming and struggling against the correction of God because you want to live your life and you want to do your own thing, but you're too dumb to realize that if God took his hands off you, you wouldn't survive another day. Some of you need to thank God that he cut off that relationship. You need to thank God that he keeps talking to you at night. You need to thank God that he's still speaking to you. Don't get mad that the Holy Spirit is telling you don't do that. That's God's love. That's his discipline. What you need to be afraid of is when he stops speaking. Leave the door open. So his living was prodigal, but his identity was intact. I don't know who this is for, but stop trying to define yourself by the thing you do instead of the God you came from. You can say whatever you want about me. You can say whatever you want. If you've observed behaviors that are inconsistent with scripture in my life, I'll be like, yep, that's right. So what? Why are you looking at mine? Have you checked on yours? You know, people have grace for those who sin like themselves. And we don't have grace for people who sin differently than us. But when God has saved you in your prodigal living, you have grace for other people who are in the process. You don't close the door behind you like you're the last person to get saved. You leave that door cracked because you know what it took to save you. You know how nasty your spirit used to be. You know what you used to do. You know how you used to treat people. You know how many things you did wrong. We could go down a laundry list, but it's the love of God that covers over our sins, restores us and gives us a new life. This is the power of understanding who you are. And once he got finished wasting his inheritance, he woke up and he said, how many of my father's servants have bread enough and to spare? I'm going to go home and I'm going to say, I've sinned. And if you want to see change, the first thing that's going to have to happen is acknowledgement. Yeah. Yeah. Write that one down because until you face what it is, he can never heal it. Until you deal with the the fractured areas of your life or the condition of your soul, he's never gonna deal with it. He sees it, but until you see it and acknowledge it, nothing's going to change. I've had some very, very deep conversations about some long held beliefs that I've had in my own life about areas that you know I had been fractured in from a young age. And I just started talking to my wife about them. I said, I just need to let you know there were some things that, that happened in my life when I was young and they fractured me and I held on to them as truth. And I'm confessing it because it actually hinders my ability to connect to you in ways that a husband should in key areas of understanding and intimacy. Let me tell you something, that thing broke something off that had been holding my marriage hostage because I dealt with truth. And the problem with church is we love our emotions tickled, but once truth shows up, people scatter. May truth be a founding tenet of this church that you don't leave when it gets uncomfortable. You don't leave when the heat turns up. When, when Pastor Rich or Pastor DC preaches a word that, that offends something in your flesh, don't get mad and I need to go to a church that understands me. This is not about understanding. This is about making sure your soul is right so that you can serve people better. I don't want to nurse my sins. I want it off my life. Is there anybody else that wants to be free? 
whom the sun sets free is free indeed. If I came in here drinking all my life, I don't want to stay here 20 years and still be drinking to nurse my pain. Let the word heal you from the inside. He said, I'm going to my father. Many of y'all go to each other. You need to go to your father. Don't let this be the only time you're in the presence of God. Don't let this be the only day in the week that you listen to worship music. Don't let this be the only time that you find yourself in the fellowship of the believers and the company of the saints. You got to find yourself in the presence of your father. You got to get back to your father. You got to get back to your original creator. You got to get back to the origin of your existence. You got to get back to your first love. The club can't save you. The relationship can't save you. That man cannot save you. That woman cannot save you. That joint cannot save you. That line cannot save you. That needle cannot save you. Nothing can save you but the blood. I got one, two, three, four, five. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other sound I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I don't know why your praise team is even moving. I didn't call for them. Don't come on this stage. I'm still preaching. I done flew all night. I'm going to preach as long as I want. 11 o'clock should have got up early. Leave the door open. Leave the door open. Gone are the days where the church is the elite, where we look down on people because of where they are. Leave the door open. Son went back. He starts walking. Sure, he's dirty, lost, and ashamed. Fleeing famine. Not unlike those who are fleeing broken places attempting to come into this nation. What is the purpose of this moment in time and what is the response of the church? Are we to dishonor Romans 13 for the sake of political expediency? And some of y'all are like, what's Romans 13? Read it. <laughs> that's the problem, y'all know. <laughs> like, whatever he said, that's it. Romans 13 says all authority is set up by God. We are to honor the authorities that have been set in place because God is using all of it to bring about his plan. So we are not Republican or Democrat or independent. Don't ever minimize God to a political affiliation. What is the response of the church? We fight for every soul. We leave the door open. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you used to believe. If you walk in here, the Holy Spirit can touch your heart. And even if you don't get saved this week, I sowed the seed. Maybe 20 years from now, somebody else waters it. And maybe 10 years after that, God gets the increase. It's not my job to see salvation. It's my job to seed salvation. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. And so, as he's walking towards his house, his father looks out the window. See, because a real father can never disown his own children. Because the Bible says when we are faithless, he is faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Ooh. Do you understand? Your father has a seat at the table for you. The table's been empty without you. He's been talking to everybody else around the table, but that big, gaping, empty space with your plate, your fork, your knife, where you're supposed to be sitting. And so many of us live beneath our privilege when our father has a seat at the table for us. While we're living as aliens and strangers afar off because of sin, 
the father has a table set. Imagine how many times while the son was out doing whatever he want that the father told the servant, hey, put another plate on the table. Why? Just in case. See, that's what VU is. VU is God's just in case. Somebody in the neighborhood wants to come and experience my presence. The doors have to be open just in case they don't feel like they connect to another body of believers. They can come in here just in case they don't feel welcomed anywhere else. They're going to feel the love of God when they come in here just in case. And at the end of the night, no food is on that plate. They put the dishes away. They close the house down. But he leaves the door open. Hey, come on, band. <laughs> they like, I don't, can I, okay. <laughs> Daddy, I gotta lock the door. We don't know who else might be out there trying to get it. I don't care, leave the door unlocked. He might have lost his key. Uh, matter of fact, don't just leave it unlocked, crack it. Let him see a little bit of light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Leave the door open. How many nights did that Father just look out the window? had all the money in the world, all the stuff you could ever want. But there's a hollow place when your child is somewhere and you can't get to him. He would trade it all just so his child could come home. That's what the church is. It's the crack of a door between death and life between the old covenant and the new covenant, between the law and grace, leave the door open. Don't judge when they walk in, assuming you know their story. You don't know what condition people come in here having escaped from. We were all refugees. We were all strangers and aliens, according to the word. We were grafted into the promise. We weren't even citizens. We weren't even supposed to get the promises, but because of faith and because of the blood of Jesus, it gave us not a green card, but a red card. The blood of Jesus is applied to my life and it gives me access to the best resources of heaven. Leave the door open. So may this church be a church that fights for lost souls. And when you see one coming, do like the daddy did. And he says, oh, I know, I know who that is. There's dirt on him. His beard is longer. His nails are longer. But that's my boy. And the Bible says he ran. Now, if you're offended, you can be like, mm-hmm. Oh, you coming back now? Here he come. Here he come. There they go. There they go. Where he at? Where he at? Feed him butter jelly. Feed him butter jelly. Feed him butter jelly. With a... I knew you wasn't saved. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> if the father was offended, he would have been there doing what a lot of religious people do. Mm. Look at you, a mess. I told you this was going to happen. Look at you. Now you're coming back groveling. Stay on the outside until you get cleaned up. The father ran. Didn't care what he smelled like. Didn't care what he looked like. Immediately hugged and kissed him on his neck where the dirt, see, from the Middle Eastern heat was just in here with the yang yang, with the bow pow, with the plat eyed cow. Turned around and said, turn up. Get the fatted calf. Where you get a fatted calf from? You don't just have one hanging around. He was growing that calf just in case his son came home. And just in case somebody comes home at any point today, heaven is sitting on the edge like, ooh, ooh, if anybody accepts my son, 
I'm sending all kinds of mercy, grace, forgiveness, provision, healing. All you got to do is walk through the open door. Jesus' blood leaves the door open. This is the vu. Existing to give you a face-to-face -face encounter with the one who created you. So the areas of your life that don't